medically, your diastasis recti is healed if it's less than two fingers width in measurement. But there are so many more factors that go into it, and I wanna discuss those in more detail because it's important to know and understand your body. First off, the width of your gap isn't the only measurement to take. Yes, it's one factor, but the other thing you really wanna pay attention to is how much tension is on that midline. Can you stick your fingers in deep or does it have a nice bounce back? Think about it this way. When you feel that connective tissue, does it feel like the firm part of your cheek or the squishy part of your cheek? If it feels like the squishy part, there's not great tension there, which means that even if you don't have a two finger gap, you might have some work to do in order to have a more functional core. If it feels firm and bouncy and you get that good bounce back when you touch that tissue, it's a great sign that that connective tissue is healing and that you're gonna be able to do more traditional core work very soon. So here's the real kicker. The width and the depth don't mean as much as this. Can you properly engage your deep core muscles during activities and manage core pressure? I'm gonna show you through a couple of exercises what I mean. Let's take sit-ups as an example because this is what most people think of when they think of ab work, all right? So if you're doing a sit-up and you're pushing out against your tummy, when you go to lift up and pushing down on your pelvic floor and you actually see your tummy rise up, this is a sign you're not managing pressure. Conversely, if you can use your core, manage pressure as you're going up and down and your tummy actually flattens as you rise up versus puffs out, that's a great indicator that you're handling that exercise well. This is a less traditional core exercise, but I feel like this one's really great at demonstrating my point. All right, if I am to just lean back and not engage my core, it's gonna puff out. On the other hand, if I've learned to breathe and manage pressure, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna inhale, go back, exhale. I'm managing that pressure with my breath. So signs that you're gonna wanna watch out for that'll let you know if you're mismanaging that pressure or if you can keep progressing and incorporate some more traditional ab work back in. Are you experiencing any doming or coning from your midline? Are you feeling any pressure or heaviness in your vagina? Are you experiencing any leaking? If you see your tummy puffing out, I call this a bread loaf, that's a sign you're mismanaging pressure also. So if you can kind of check those boxes and know that you're not leaking, you're not coning or doming, you're not having that bread loafing and you're not leaking, keep adding harder and harder core work in. That's actually really beneficial for healing your core. And last thing I wanna note, keep in mind there are about a million great deep core exercises so even if you're working on healing your diastasis recti it doesn't have to be boring sit-ups crunches planks those are the tip of ab work iceberg there's so much more and frankly working that deep core whether you have diastasis recti or not is so beneficial for your waistline for back pain for hip pain and your pelvic floor so even if you're gonna go add more traditional core exercises back in in your boot cap classes or whatever you're doing for exercise, be sure that you're still loving that deep core from time to time. So important. 